ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد امرنا الله تعالى بذلك في كتابه الكريم فقال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم ما بعد the brothers and sisters there was a time which i'm pretty sure you remember this day i had returned home to my apartment in medina that day and when i met with my family and i met with the neighbors i saw in their face the face of someone who had lost a family member and so i looked at the sadness and looked at the tears and i said who died sensory acuity immediately that was my first question and i said to the person in front of me i said from the pain that i saw in their face i said did your father die because it was that intense the pain and the person responded to me and they said no sheikh bin baz rahimahullah passed away today he passed away on a thursday and on friday every masjid all around the world was speaking about his death. Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah was blind. He was very old. And if you sat and listened to him speaking, you would not understand what he was saying. You wouldn't. That's just the way he speaks. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put love of this man in the hearts of so many Muslims all around the world to the point that his death was more, in fact, you would cry more and feel sadder than the death of a loved one. And because, inshallah ta'ala, it was a good sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with him, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts qabul, acceptance in the hearts of the people's hearts towards that person. There's an ayah that gets recited in every Jummah khutbah. And we hear it again and again and again, yet we delete the fact that we're listening to it. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this verse, and we recite it in the Jama Khutbah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ Now this is very interesting, like have the taqwa, have the true taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and don't die. إِلَّا Except. It's like, لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا الله. Don't die إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ don't die except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't die except as a Muslim, a believer in Allah azza wa jal. If you notice, we've been speaking about goal setting and the things that people you know, set their standards for. One person for a house, one person for a wife, one person for a car. And then when you read the prophets and what they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, you'll see again and again they'll say, Make us die with the righteous people. The righteous people, let us be gathered with them. The Prophet Wasallam's last words was a dua. His goal. Aisha radiallahu anha says that the Prophet Wasallam died in her lap. And he raised his hands to the heavens. And his dua, a dua that he'd been living his whole life, aiming for was, Allahumma fir rafiq al-a'la. O oh Allah, in the highest companionship, al rafiq al-a'la. And so the goals that we have, inshallah ta'ala today, what I wanted to speak about is that ultimately you're living for death. If you aim to die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life. And if you aim to just live, then you become a dead man walking. And how true that is. 
When you look at the communities, for example, people who are too busy to focus on the hereafter, you'll see that they're like zombies going back and forth to work. The people who are too busy to take the time to call the parents and do sadaqah and so on, it's just a dead man walking. They bring no benefit to themselves, no benefit to the people around them. Yet the person who's focused on their hereafter, is focused on dying, is focusing to make sure that even after a good deed, they're like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I still got to follow this up with a good deed. And their focus is completely on the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the hereafter and gives them the dunya. And inshallah ta'ala, that's what we're going to be speaking about. If a person focuses on the hereafter, this is, you know, I heard someone once say, just arbitrarily, that their goal was Jannah. And when I thought about it, I assumed that if this person's goal was Jannah, this was the goal of the mother, as we spoke about, that her child would be a child who was excellent in their studies. They excelled in their studies. And they had the best character on top of that, and they were a balanced child. Because what? Because the goal was the hereafter. If someone said to me that my goal is just money, then I would warn the person that you might be getting set up. And you might be moving forward in a hollow life. You have to focus on the hereafter. And when you focus on it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِنَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ That whoever does righteous deeds, whether they're a female or a male, whether they're male or female, if they do righteous deeds, right, they're focused on pleasing Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا That we'll, we will raise them in a beautiful, happy life. Isn't that what everybody's looking for? The happy life? And yet they just went down the wrong path. They thought that the happy life just goes straight forward. Just take, you know, use it and get the house. Just, you know, take, you know, this loan, that loan. Try to get the happy life, displeasing Allah. And they never got that happy life that they were looking for. Yet if someone focused on righteousness, and so many people, subhanAllah, you'll see that when they do get the wealth and you ask them about it, what is true wealth? They'll say it's charity. It's giving back. What they're saying is true wealth is righteous deeds. They just took a long detour before they figured that out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you access to that right now. That if you focused on your righteous deeds, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless you in the life. You wouldn't feel conflicted about having a nice car. You wouldn't feel conflicted about having a great job. Because your life is focused on the hereafter. You know that all of that stuff is just a bluff. And it's the bluff of other people saying that, you know, this isn't righteousness. Or that is, they don't know what righteousness is. When you go to the Quran, you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to make the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, give us a great life. Wafil akhirati hasana. And give us a great hereafter. Waqina adabana. And protect us from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qul man harrama zinata Allahi allati akhraj li'ibadihi wa tayyibati min al-rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say who is it that forbids the zina of Allah, the beauty of Allah. The beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives out to the people. أَخْرَجَ الْعِبَادِي وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنْ الرِّزْقِ And the, the tayyibat, the good things, the law, the delicious things from the provisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who made that haram? And I know, you know who made that haram? Someone who's got issues. Someone's got their own problems, their own beliefs. They don't know nothing about Islam. And so they looked at all the good things of life and they said, this is the cause of the lack of righteousness. And so they forbade it from everybody. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is that that forbids it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هِيَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, it is for those who have believed in this life. It's for the believers in this life and exclusively for them in the hereafter. In both places that they will have this righteous life. But it's just this pull that people have away from their deen that they misunderstood. So they're not focused on their deen and they're not focused on their dunya either. Yet had they been focused on their hereafter, 
learning what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they would have had both. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even with all these blessings that are here in the dunya, he said, my example is the example of a traveler. And some of you are traveling here, and you just look at your lifestyle. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like just a traveler, takes some shade under a tree during the hot hour, and then moves on. And we've been saying that again and again during our seminar here. Just move on. Don't feel like this is the end of the road. If you were here at the hotel, who buys furniture? If you said, you know what, I came late for class. I was at Ikea. I was buying some furniture. Why? Because I like to, you know, sit in this type of chair while I'm, I'm here. You would say, you're so foolish. Because you only have this short time. You've got to make it count and you've got to focus on the most important things because you're going to be moving on. I think of a, an old person, an old man, and you ask him, what's your goal? And he says, I need to make money. You're like, there's some misunderstanding here. You've only got maybe a year left to live, maybe half a year, maybe less than that. And yet, look at whatever age you are now, how long do you have to live? You're just assuming that you're going to live till age 65 or 70, but today could be your last day. What did you focus on today? And are you pleased with how you lived your life and how you focused? Because if you lived your life in a way focused on your death, then it would be a life worth living. When will I die? It doesn't matter because every day I'm prepared to die. That becomes your motto. <clears throat> and Najashi, it's a beautiful story. He was the king of Habasha. When I teach this in the Sira class, I always ask in the Sira class, who's from Habasha? And someone will raise their hand and I say to them, be proud. Because a Najashi was from your country. And the Prophet وسلم, said about a Najashi that he's a righteous king. That nobody is treated unjustly. He had courage. He had justice. And when Ja'far who explained the situation to the Muslims, a Najashi said that this is the truth. The priests around him said, how can you say that? He just said that Jesus was, Jesus was not God. He said that Jesus was a prophet. And Najashi got angry at them. And he said, you can complain all you want. You can fret and fume. But Isa is no different than what Jafar said about him. And they backed off. When Najashi died, this is the point in the seerah that the news of his death was brought to the Prophet ﷺ by Jibreel. Jibreel told the Prophet ﷺ that Najashi died. Did Najashi have money? Of course he did. He was the king of the country. But he had justice, he had courage, and he stood up for the truth. Jibreel brings the news to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ announced to the Muslims, it's recorded. He said, ﷺ, He didn't say Najashi died today. In fact, he doesn't say that in the hadith. He said, Today a righteous man has died. He said, Stand up. All the companions, Abu Bakr. Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhum, they all stood up behind the Prophet وسلم, to pray for this righteous man. How are you going to die? How are you going to die? And because he lived for his hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this dunya, and history records all these horrible people that lived at the time of the Prophet وسلم, like Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl. And the history records people who stood up for the truth. In just a few years, you're talking about like 10 years. And that was the, his time. And then he died. And this is how he ended. What's your end? How do you do this? How do you leave that legacy? Oh, how do you focus on the hereafter every day that you die? They, there is um, statements that they say of people from the Tabi'een and righteous scholars. They would say to them that, you know, even for yourself, if today was the last day that you're going to live or tomorrow is going to be the day of judgment, what would change in your life? What would change? And you might say, well, I'd stop this. I wouldn't, you know, I'd leave work. I'd go, you know, 
phone some routers that I cut off. I have credit card bills. I'd pay them off right now. I do everything. You know, basically shift the whole life because of tonight. It was said to people in the past that if you were to tell them that today was the last day, they would not have, have anything extra to do in the day. Meaning that they already live their life like that. They're already living to die. One would say to his wife that if I die tonight, then these are the debts that are owed to such and such. This is what's... He would basically fix his whole life before he would go out for work in the morning. Every single day he would do that. Another scholar would say, uh, this was Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah. He had two students and they were arguing who should lead the prayer. One of them says, you lead the prayer. The other one said, I'll only lead the prayer if you promise to lead the prayer at Fajr time. And then Fudayl, rahimahullah, he said, if that's your attitude, then you haven't prayed. How can you pray Isha expecting to live till Fajr time? Every salah that you get into, you pray as if it's your last prayer. And inshallah ta'ala in the second khutbah, I'll give you some examples on how you can leave this legacy, inshallah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin wa al-muslimat fa astaghfiruhu innahu hu al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. In the millionaire who went to Jen event, we spoke about leverage. Leverage. And we spoke about how in a you have a car. If you put like a jack there, it's a small piece of equipment, but that jack, because of the way it's shaped, it's able to lift up a very heavy car, the heaviest of cars it can lift up. And so your intelligence, it's not, you don't have to just do your good deeds. How would you like to go to the hereafter with the good deeds of everybody else and leverage those good deeds? And so the Prophet ﷺ said, He said, the person who encourages other people to goodness gets the same reward as their good deeds without taking anything away from them. And so if you had a congregation of a thousand people and you put in the effort to share the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to encourage them, to influence them, that you would get the reward of everybody there. And I'm sure you've had experiences like this, but in the hereafter, you can start leveraging. You only have 24 hours in a day. How can you get the reward of everyone? How can you get the reward of everyone into future generations still getting ajr from them? You need to be like an ajr entrepreneur. And put forward and get these good deeds. The Prophet said, The Prophet said to Ali radiallahu anhu that if oh, if you guide just one person, if Allah guides at your hands just one person, it's better for you than the dunya and everything in it. All the treasures you think, like this king and that king and this person, that put them all together. Guiding one person is better for you than that. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't, it's not just guide them to Islam. That you might be able to find a Muslim and guide them to some goodness. Guide a Muslim to help them, protect them from riba. Guide someone else in, in this area, that area. You're able to guide someone. And that sounds a lot like life coaching. Interesting. Who can you guide with these tools? In this path of building up these good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you to neglect your family. A lot of people I've seen when it comes to the da'wah, and I might you know, be um, held accountable for this as well, is that as soon as they start the da'wah, they say, it's all about the da'wah, it's all about the hereafter, it's all about Allah. But when they look at their life wheel, they realize that they've neglected their parents, they've neglected their family, they've neglected their health. They've neglected their financial situation. All of these things, basically, they've become the reverse Pac-Man. Focused on the hereafter. But yet when they study and they give lectures, someone says to them, can you speak about taking care of your family? And they'll say, no, I don't want to speak about that. Because I would be hypocrite if I spoke about it. 
And yet, so when they say they're doing it for the sake of Allah, does Allah need them and require them to abandon their family? The answer is obviously no. Some of the sisters might ask as well, everybody, all these men going around, building institutes, doing this, giving lectures. What about a mother taking care of her children? The Prophet ﷺ said that when a person dies, their actions are cut off except three things. One of them being knowledge that people benefit from. The second one being, or sorry, a charity that continues. Or knowledge that people benefit from. Or a child that makes dua for their parents. So if a mother raises her child, then she thinks, I'm not leaving a legacy. Well, how will my deeds continue after, you know, when everybody else is building these big institutes and so on? What's in it for me? What's in it for you is your children. That one child that you took care of and you nourished and, and raised, that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they go down to sajda, they make dua for their mother. They make dua for their father. That that is part of the da'wah. That a person lives their life in balance. And the Arabic word for balance is adl, which can be translated back into English as justice. And being out of balance, the Arabic word for that is vulm, imbalance, i.e. injustice. And so we do no vulm to ourselves. In conclusion, inshallah ta'ala, you've been here for many days and you may have gotten a glimpse at your point A. Your point B is still for you to choose. It's still there. And you always have access to choose that. That's your choice. How long are you going to live? You have to pick your point B. Where are you moving towards? And so I want to encourage you to write a new story in your life. How much does it cost to write a story? It's free. You just write out your story, scrap it, write another one, scrap it, write another one, until you get the story that excites you and energizes you, a story that you can put up on the wall and say, this is the life that I want to live. And this is the direction I want to move to. Shaitan will come to you at that time and say, that's impossible. How can you be in balance? It's either got to be this or that. And you'll immediately say, ha ha ha, I remember something I learned in class. It's a three letter word called and. It can be this and that how will it get done allahu a'lam but you're making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah give me goodness in this life and give me goodness in the hereafter and protect me from hellfire life coaching those of you who are taking the life coaching seminar there's no doubt that everything that you're learning here is a tool to get to these ends it is not the end it is more of a tool to get there, basically a vehicle. I have told you that the only way you will learn how to use this vehicle is by driving it for 50 sessions. And then you will learn how to drive. And you might even need another 50 after that. But you've got to implement it. It's got to become part of who you are. If you don't take it for a drive, I promise you that you can forget this tool. It doesn't work. It'll just be a binder up on your, on your shelf. And you'll roll back to point A, focused again on the dunya. Or you can focus on the hereafter and take what we're learning to heart, implement it by sharing with others, inshallah ta'ala, and then in turn, what you give comes back to you. And bi la, I hope and wish for you that you have the goodness of the hereafter and the goodness of this life and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you from hellfire. Inna Allahum salluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad Hema salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid Allahumma aghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakirina wa anthana Allahumma nahayta minna fa ahya ala al-islam wa man tawaffayta minna fa tawaffahu ala al-iman rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar inna Allah ya'mur bil 'adli wal إحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون